Blade is the strongest character in Honkai Star Rail. Don't believe me? Well, today I'll be attempting to solo Memory of Chaos up till floor 10 with only a single E0 Blade in my team. The rules are simple. First, I have to win one fight out of the two in each stage with only Blade in my team since, well, I can't use him twice. Secondly, I need to win. That's it. If anyone has their doubts with Blade, send this video to them. Firstly, this is my Blade. I have him at E0 with no superimpositions of his own light cone. So it's not absolutely free to play because I have his light cone, but it's not a hyper well Blade at all. That's E6, right? I'm using the Longo's Disciple and Rutilin Arena sets with everything on HP% percent main stats with a wind damage planosphere. My stats look like this, and it is time to put him to the test. The first stage went like... The second stage sees me fighting this boss and already the elite got relatively close to defeating Blade here. But because he's the strongest of all time, we healed up as we murdered the Cochlea cosplayer and destroyed the Stone Cold Steve Austin cosplayer. We're hovering at half health most of the time throughout the fight and every 5 hits we take and every ultimate we do simply heals us up enough for another round of beating. Which is also Blade's favorite hobby, getting beaten down. But guys, this is only MOC2 and I already almost died so will I get to MOC10? I don't know man, you tell me. Well, crud. The problem here is that Blade's charge stacks that he gains from fighting this elite doesn't carry over to the Branya fight since they are considered as two separate fights. That caused my health to be low because I wouldn't have gotten the heal from the stacks had I just got hit one more time from the elite. Since I didn't, I came into Branya's fight with no health and no stacks as well. And that means Branya was just able to kill me. Well, of the 10 stages I gotta go through, I think dying at MOC3 is extremely butt clenching. But I realized that if I just had more health, I wouldn't die. Groundbreaking discovery right there. I went ahead and switched out my wind sphere for a HP percent one and uh, yes guys I have two plus 15 spheres for blade only the best for my bladey boy man I also went ahead and fought Branya first before fighting the weaker elite at the side so that I don't see myself having low health and no stacks moving into the second fight and well what do you know blade absolutely destroyed the overgrown soul of and Branya's tier 3 subscriber we did win but with MOC3 being that daunting of a challenge I went in MOC4 with my sweaty palms on Bailu's mouth pad and this is how it went Unfortunately, guys, I think we have reached the end. The main issue is that the bleach from this elite stacks as one debuff instead of stacking separately like wind shears would. That meant I was taking upwards to 1000 damage per turn taken and only got one stack of charge out of that. And that simply outpaced my follow up attack heals. Even the Baymax guy got close to destroying Blade with pure damage output. No gimmick whatsoever. This is where Hoyoverse shows just how little bullcrap they want happen in their game. You're simply not supposed to solo stages with one character. Well, unless you eat sex. But thankfully for you guys, I'm the guy who would sit in my moldy underwear for hours just to figure out how we can do this. I've done the impossible with Bailu, I'm gonna do it with probably what her brother would look like, no? And then I got my answer. Guard of Watering Snow. The problem I'm having is simply not having enough healing capabilities since my ultimate and my follow-up attacks simply isn't constant enough. I'm also taking way too much damage since memory chaos are basically raw that increases on the enemies in some cases. Guard of Watering Snow here reduces all that damage by 8% while the 4 piece effect helps me regain energy on top of healing me every turn. That would get me more ultimate usage and survive these pesky debuffs because I will pretty much nullify their damage with the heal I get. But as you can see here, my blade isn't really on the guard set, right? I would be very stupid to invest in a whole other set just for blade. I went ahead and did it, guys. I farmed for a whole extra set of plus 15 guard set just so I can solo every MOC with blade. Love me, blade. Love. After asking Blade to cut me because he's hot, it is time to put my theory in action. I'll show my stats as the fight go by because trust me, there are a lot more thinking to making this work. Regardless, we are able to easily heal against Baymax, though we still ended up with one health. Thankfully, we have the ult to open with the Bleed Elite and that marks the start of our first real challenge. As you can see here, the enemies are doing their usual rotation and is able to bring me down to extremely low. While doing so, I also have an absurd amount of Bleed stacks and last time, that was what murdered me. But here's the thing, the guard set effect heals me up first before the debuff take effect. And with that, I'm able to just heal enough to cover up for most of the bleed damage, and we live, dude. The takeaway here for anyone's watching is that the heal from the guard set actually happens before the debuff, so yeah, it's, it's good to know, I guess. Let's not forget that we are constantly gaining energy from our set as well, since we're almost always lower than 50% health. That allowed me to have a lot more ult usage, and we actually brought down MOC4 with only Blade, man, wow. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The next stage is our next challenge. 
MOC5, which features one of the most annoying enemy of all time, the Magikarp Trainer. He summons up these puffer fishies that decreases my defense and just so happens he can have like four of them up at the same time. If you've played Pokemon before, you'll know who I'm talking about. Are they not just the same? In any case, the problem here isn't actually the Magikarps. It's this. Remember when I said Blade sucks against Debos? Well, this is exactly why. Though Blade is able to heal so much, if he's controlled, he simply can't. And with the barrage of bad breaths, Blade just dies. And now is the time where I will be showing you my stats. I have put a lot of thought into how this run can possibly happen. And in order for me to win against the Magikarp guy, I absolutely cannot get control. Which is why I specifically obtained a relic that has FRS on that. Blade himself also gained 10 effect resistance from his traits, which made this kind of possible. In the end, I was able to obtain a total of around 40% FRS. This isn't actually the best outcome though, because I still have Rudolin Arena as a planar set. Had I switched to Broken Keel, I could have obtained more FRS. And I was only able to get 67% crit rate anyway, which isn't even enough to activate Rudolin, so Broken Keel definitely would have been better here. Sadly, I ran out of resources and hey, am I really about to plus 15 over 10 relics just for Blade? Yes, because it's fun. No, because I tried and I just couldn't get the correct main stats on those kills. Well, what can you do? The fight starts and yeah, all I had to do is resist the guy's debuff. And oh heck yeah, oh hell no. Well, if you guys will remember, this only does the imprisonment thingy twice per sanction though. I couldn't resist the second one, but this time I'm actually not dead though. This is because I also happened to see this coming. <laughs> and also specifically went for relics with speed on that. You must have a good amount of speed to take turns to some extent because from what I've noticed, the first CC in the stage will instantly kill you. But if they happen to have another round of debuff coming, you will naturally shake it off if you're fast enough. And that is what happened here. I resisted the first debuff, not being able to resist the second one, but I did shake it off and defeated the six Magikarps and went on to fight Groot. Which was surprisingly easy because he has a self-heal gimmick, which also means he just has less damage overall and no means to control Blade. With the final ultimate, we have done it, guys. MOC5 is defeated. Some people actually couldn't beat it with a fully invested team and Blade here just does it alone. So yeah, gosh dang. And honestly, guys, I had to kind of find some sort of breakthrough for almost every MOC stage. And I think this is the ultimate version of my edgy MC. I don't see myself improving him any much longer. Anyways, guys, MOC 6 sees us fighting Harambe, which is touted as the annoying monkey. This guy is tough to beat because he targets whoever that uses your skill and damn near one shot step. But can Blade solo Harambe? Let's find out. Every hit Harambe does can range from 1k to 1.6k damage, which which for Blady, it gets kind of close. Ah. But it wasn't enough to bring him down, and yes, we did it, guys. We killed Harambe. I forgot there's three ways. I had to really steal myself to kill Harambe, but now I had to kill another and destroy his habitat too. It was pretty tough, and I got very close to dying quite a few times. But with Garden Water Snow and the Memory Turbulence helping me out, I barely survive a lot of times and barely heal back up every time. And in the end, Harambe falls. I don't know what to feel, guys. I won, but I murdered two Harambes. With blood in his hands, Blade went berserk and completely manhandled MOC7. As you can see here, both of these boss simply doesn't have enough damage to even rival Harambe. This guy also just burns me, which feeds my stacks, and that's about it. After laying them down and realized that violence feels good, Blade's bloodlust continued to MOC 8, which <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I don't want to fight the primate again, not even because of the Harambe thing, but they're actually pretty tough to beat. And wouldn't you know it, it's just the same stage, but he does way more damage now. With that, I am stuck. There are no longer any idea I can possibly have. So I did what I did to Bailu, which is forcing things my way. I tried again, and this time I wasn't even sure what I did differently, but I barely lived and scraped through the first Harambe. I believe it is just better ultimate timing that helped me out here. But just when you think it's done, we now have to fight the second Harambe with Stone Cold. Just how can I win? I have to now survive some obscene damage from Harambe and survive through the unethical freezes. And when the monkey does 2.3k a hit while I'm frozen, I just can't, guys. All odds are against me, but I am not the kind of guy to just give up, guys. I went back in and said to the world, Hey, nobody believes in you. You lost again and again and again. The lights are cut off, but you're still looking at your dream, reviewing it every single day, and you're saying to yourself, it's not over until I win. Sing women, sing for the year, sing for the laughter, sing for the tear. Dream on, dream on.
I don't know what I even did differently, but I still forced my way through this. If I had to explain, I think it's simply perfect all usage for heals and my effect resist helping me out. With all of that done though, we still have two stages ahead of me. It has already been a miraculous run so far, but can it keep going? Here's MOC9. I'm happy to see it's just Groot, but that guy was not the issue, guys. He's pretty easy, but then I reached the next big challenge. Bojack Horseman. And this is what happens. Yes, guys, if I get debuffed by that arrow, I instantly die. It's similar to the Magikarp guy, except it is MOC8, which means they probably have high effectiveness. I think it goes up to like 32% at level 90. I don't know the exact percentages of how these debuffs land, so I can't quite calculate the exact chances I have to resist with 41% of fair resistance. However, though, I definitely know it's possible. Here's why. My Super Wolf with 100% effectiveness guarantees the chances of landing her ultimate's debuff on any MOC enemies. And this number is calculated based on the fact that the toughest enemy should have at most 30% base effect resist. If I just reverse this thought, the enemies need even more than 100% effectiveness to guarantee their debuffs on me, since I have 41% effect resistance, which is more than their 30% base effect resist. And that is simply impossible because I'm sure even you have experienced resisting later MOC enemies with characters with low effect resistance. And honestly, just by running this thought through my head feels like I'm the boss. Like Blade is the menace. These two are just like scraping by, dude. That is how I know on paper that my Blade should absolutely could resist this debuff and then started my trail for greatness after over five tries I finally got to resist. This is the run of all time, guys. I went ahead and tanked everything, barely healing up and constantly dishing out damage. I know I have to kill Bojack Horseman before he gets his debuffing skill up again or else I would get CC'd and die. And wouldn't you know it, I wasn't fast enough and he charges the bow up again. At this point, I am panicking, but... Thanks to all the energy I got from the guard set, I got hit just enough for an ultimate one round before the horse goes and just about defeated him. With the main threat defeated, we destroyed Groot and actually obtained victory. Holy crud. But guys, this video can only end if I beat MOC Ted. We have to defeat Kafka before we sheath our blade. How fitting for a final fight. And as we go in... <laughs> I'm sure you already see this coming, but yes, Kafka is nothing easier than a horse guy. Again, if I fail to resist Kafka's temptation, I get dominated and I will instantly die. In order to win, I simply have to resist. There's no way around it. I've also ran out of ways to commentate, so I'll just let you watch what happened.
finally did it! Blade actually went on and soloed every single MOC stage on his own with only his signature light cone, zero in position, zero idle lines, and mostly just free to play setup. Note that my traces wasn't even maxed yet and my Rudolin Arena wasn't even activated since I had lower than 70% crit rate. I dare say you might be able to do this with a fully free to play blade without his light code. And there you have it guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's my dream to create content for a living and this is my best attempt at it. I really appreciate the support guys and as long as I'm able to make people happy, I'm happy. And that is all for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Take care.